Hello there and welcome back to the channel. This is my end of 2019 video and in this one we're going to be talking about some of the products that I got to look at this year, some of them that I haven't, give you guys my thoughts on what I think the best products that we have seen which are both drone related or camera related as well and then we're going to talk a little bit about the channel too because it's been a big year for me this year with the channel and we reached quite a nice milestone and we're going to talk a little bit around what I'm going to be doing moving into 2020 as well. Okay, the first thing we're going to talk about is drones because that is primarily what we discuss on this channel and it has been an interesting year 2019 for the drone industry and whilst we haven't seen a huge amount of hardware coming out, legislation wise it has been non-stop and there's been a lot to talk about since the Gatwick incident roughly this time last year. We've had the changes in the UK as we move towards drone registration and the adoption of how everyone gets on board with that with the clubs and organisations. We've got the new EU rules coming into force mid 2020 we were going to have things like drone ID, the new aircraft classification system and the changes around how commercial operators will work in the UK specifically with PFCO really on its way out and moving more towards a permission based on what you intend to do and not specifically commercial operation. However that side of it has kept us busy and I have been talking quite a bit about that when I've been on SUAS News with Gary and the guys as well. However Hardware wise it has not been all quiet because there has been some really interesting stuff happening. On the DJI side really it's been a year of waiting to see what happens next year because DJI did announce halfway through that they were going to be putting ADS-B in or their uh, detection system on all of their drones and because of that you haven't really seen any new releases this year apart from the Mavic Mini and really when you look at that it's more evolutionary than revenue revolutionary and whilst it is absolutely tiny it does blow me away of how small it actually is and the technology that's in it it isn't a giant step forward like we've seen from some of the other products out there. Before I come on to the Skydio I also want to mention to Unique as well because they have released the H3 this year. I haven't had a chance to see that myself but I did have a play with the H Plus early in the year and overall I have to say I was really impressed with that drone. It does have some of the best camera controls I have ever used on an aircraft. I will say that and I do like the integration with the ST16 as well. However unfortunately they don't seem to be able to capture the market just like some of the other manufacturers do and you don't seem to get the fanfare around their releases like the others do as well. I would like to have a look at the H3 and I'm going to try and contact Unique early next year and have a play with it if it's going to be possible because it's going to be nice to see where it's at compared to where the H Plus was because it does take things slightly forward. Talking about drones there really is only one though that has made a massive splash in the ocean and the reality of that is it is the Skydio 2 and it is hard not to be blown away by the sheer technology that is in this drone. Now I was very lucky to be able to talk to Adam the CEO when we were on SUAS News with Gary and it just was really interesting to hear him talk about what they've been doing, how they've got to where they are today and just some of the technology that is in that drone. Now I haven't seen it myself because it's not available in Europe yet. I'm hoping to get my hands one one as soon as it is but the US guys are getting their orders today and you are seeing more and more interesting footage from this aircraft. Whilst the camera might not quite be at the level that you get with the Mavic 2 Pro or some of the other ones with the one in sensors where this aircraft really takes off is how it's able to use that sensing system with its six 4k cameras and navigate and there's been a number of videos just this week showing you it moving through the woods of avoiding trees and branches and another one showing you it flying through bridges right up close to metal and the reason they're able to do that is there is no compass on board the Skydio 2. It is not using a mag whatsoever and it is simply using that 
optical system to be able to keep the aircraft straight and navigate through those obstacles. So there is going to be a lot of interesting footage and interesting use cases coming up for this aircraft. And because it doesn't have that compass sensor, you're going to be able to do things that we've never seen people do before with drones. And as I said, flying down through the bridges and things like that. Now it is early days yet. And the reality is no product is perfect. You are going to see issues just like you do see with any other drone out there but it is hard not to be blown away with a what they've achieved what they've delivered and i am massively looking forward to seeing where it's at as we move forward into 2020 now Talking about 2020 for drones, I suspect it's going to be a very busy year because whilst it would be easy to say right now, Skydio have the legs on DJI, that won't last for long. And it's hard to believe that DJI do not have something up their sleeve. You only actually have to look back a little bit of time ago when they did their Phantom X concept video that showed a Phantom flying through the woods. And that is basically what Skydio are doing today. So DJI were looking at this some time ago. So they're not going to be far behind. They also put out a statement earlier this year that they intend to integrate the ADS-B into all their aircraft. So we're going to see a whole host of new models coming with that new feature as well. So I do think 2020 is going to be a very interesting year. Sticking on drones and moving over to the racing side, I think the biggest thing that really caught my eye and what really stole the market this year was the DJI Digital FPV system. Now, I was very lucky to be able to get my hands on this a little bit early before the release, and I was blown away myself at just how good this system was. When I first heard it was coming, I did do a lot of videos on the other system, the OcuSync Air system, and whilst I was impressed with it, it wasn't up to the standard people would expect for pure racing. And when I finally got my hands on this one, I was a little bit unsure how good it would be, but it was hard not to be again blown away at just how good it was. And whilst we have also seen Fat Shark release Bite Frost, DJI really have been putting in the punches with this system, releasing update after update and giving us more and more features every time, right up to the last update where we've now got the Betaflight OSD integration. Um, uh, if you'd have asked me 12 months ago, would have I expected DJI to have delivered this product, I'd have absolutely put money against it. But hands down, they really have changed the FPV industry as we know it today. And I am seeing more and more posts from people saying I'm done on analog I'm completely moving over and whilst it will never fully replace things for people it does it for 90 percent if not more and delivers what people want and we're going to see some interesting stuff moving forward into 2020 with it as well it isn't over there's some hints of some new third party ear units on the table and I think you're going to see a lot more interesting stuff around the FPV system as well that isn't to say though Bite Frost from Fat Shark are gone because I do think they are working away in the background and do have a very interesting product they were clear Clearly caught off guard with the DJI release and whilst it's clear to see that they were working on something in the background they were literally blown away and, and it was their own comments just how good the DJI system was however they are not down and out and they are still producing updates and you are seeing more and more come from this system every day there's going to be digital camera options as I understand it coming soon instead of the analog HD and that should take it forward to the next step as well so it is clear that we've got two players players uh, fighting with each other which is DJI and Fat Shark and whilst it's not Fat Shark's core market they are clearly working well with Divimath and it's going to be interesting to see where that ends up as well. What it means for users is the industry is absolutely boiling away at the moment and there's tons of innovation happening and when you just look at what these releases have done especially the DJI one I have to say you've seen loads of frame releases loads of controller releases and they really have reignited the FPV industry and it is on the boil at the moment and I think we're really going to see some interesting products moving into 2020 as well.
Other things I've spoke a lot about this year, especially within the drone industry, is flight controllers. And I've been lucky to be able to spend quite a lot of time with a number of different ones, as well as the Hue Lincoln Cube system. Now, I won an award on these earlier in the year, and I was blown away by that one, and I'll talk about that a little bit more at the end of the video. But I have to say, we've seen quite a lot of innovation in the drone accessory and self-build market this year, and probably more than we've actually seen in the ready-to-fly aircraft market. And again, We've got the here link, which I've been doing a few videos on, and it is getting there. Um, I have seen quite a few comments from people wanting to know what's happening next, especially around Solex and things like that. Philip assures us that it is coming. I think we just need to give them a bit of time. We've also had the Cube Orange released this year, as well as the Yellow and the other models as well. And you've now got the ADS-B on this one as well. This one is going into a build at the beginning of January, and I'll be documenting that one as well. And we're going to be doing a full setup on that one all the way Way through to getting it in the year. I'm probably going to use uh, an F550 on that one which I've got over there and again it was really good to pop up and see Ben at 3DXR who's an absolute wizard on all of this stuff and he really does know his stuff and I'm going to try and go up there actually this year and do a video from his workshop as well because it is an absolute Santa's cave and you could probably spend days and days in there and keep finding new stuff that's interesting to look at. However, what we'll do is we'll do that again as we move into 2020. But with regards to the cube stuff, I do want to thank the guys over at 3DXR. We've managed to borrow some equipment this year. Also, the guys over at Profi CNC as well. I think with regards to the here link, let's give it a little bit of time. I know they are working tires, tire, tireless. I can't even say the word. They are working as fast as they can. There's been some big updates in the background and the software that's going to be coming for it as well. It's going to allow dual remote controllers. There's going to hopefully be a ground station receiver. So instead of using the here link receiver, you're going to be able to use one and connect it to the USB directly. And there's going to be the here pro unit as we move into 20. 20 as well. The thing to always remember with these products is they are a small company that are trying to drive innovation. They are not the same as DJI or any of the other large manufacturers out there. Philip does all his own stuff himself and he's built this company up after leaving 3DR and we have to give them time to be able to develop. It might be frustrating at times that guys think, you know, where is the development? But I do know that they have a huge amount in the pipeline. They've got some fantastic people working with them in the background and we will see it coming as well. And the thing to remember is, you know, Philip, for the most part, does the hardware and then Ardra Pilot delivers the software or PX4. And whilst sometimes it can be frustrating that one system works with one bit and it doesn't with the other, it is an open source community. Even the hardware is partly open source as well for the most part and it does mean that you are getting equipment that should be tens of thousands more at a much cheaper price but you are having to support it in a different way you're having to actually get your software from here and your hardware from here and again because of the Ardra Pilot is open source as well it means not everything gets done at the same time and there can be some steps that need to be taken on one side before the other side catches up but I am sure in 2020 we will see things level up a lot more one thing I will say on the Ardra Pilot as well is please take note of that update that I've mentioned on a couple of blog posts, the update to 3.6.12. Make sure you are on that with Copter unless you're moving to 4.0 because this I2C storm bug is particularly nasty and you do want to make sure that you are on the latest one. Otherwise, you could get yourself into a bit of trouble. But overall, it's been really good to look at this stuff this year. I also had a look at the uh, V5 Plus from CUAV and that's a very nice flight controller as well. I'm going to try and take a look at some more as we move into 2020 because there's been a, lot, a number of other ones showing up too. So we're going to try and get them in as a new one from CUAV too. And I'm going to speak to them and hopefully have a look at that as well. Now with this gear as well, I've also been building the Rover, which I've got hiding down here on the floor. Progress is being made. Now I haven't done a video on this for a little bit of time because I've been tied up on some other stuff with work, but things are happening as you can see like this. I've been doing a lot of 3D printing with bits around the sides, plastic panels. I've got a, a little laser rangefinder mounted on the front. You might have seen a post from me with the light on the front, but unfortunately that affected the uh, way it was working. So I've taken that off and that's gonna go on the top. Um, I'm gonna be doing a number of videos on 
on this over the next couple of months. Again, showing you where I'm at with it, the progress. I had a bit of a fail on my part where I managed to rip the USB port off the board on the motor controller, entirely my fault. I'll talk about that in a video as well. And I've now had to hardwire a USB cable to it, but things are in progress. It is happening, don't worry. And I will talk about that again in January when I'm ready to share with you guys what I've been doing. And we have got a cube purple with the here link in this one as well. Overall, I think 2020 is going to be quite a big year for the drone industry. We are going to see a lot more models from DJI as they integrate their ADS-B system, as well as bring things forward, as we've seen with Skydio. We're also very likely to see the Phantom 4 Pro version 2 in February, because there's hints that that is coming back in its original version. And we're also going to see things like the Skydio release into Europe, as well as the Evo 2, and what else Parrot bring to the table as well. And don't forget Unique, they're always there in the background too. So I think overall for the drone industry, it's probably going to be a quite a big year and I would be holding your money back if you are looking to purchase a product now and wait to see what's just around the corner. Moving on to cameras, because I've also been looking at quite a few cameras this year, and I don't really talk photography a lot on this channel, but I do do quite a bit of it. Now, for me, I had got the chance to have a look at the Osmo Action as well as the Osmo Pocket, and I have to say I was really blown away by the Osmo Action. It was a loner unit, so I didn't actually get to keep it, but I really did like that little action camera, and for me, it was all about having that screen on the front and having that ability to frame your shots. Now, we have seen GoPro introduced their new version. However, if I was choosing between the two today, I would still choose the DJI every time simply because of that front screen. However, if you did need the HDMI output, you are going to need to go with the GoPro. Larger camera wise, and that's something I'm going to talk a little bit more about on the channel actually as we move into 2020. Don't worry, I'm not going to turn it into a photography channel, but I do do a bit about it. And for me this year, I bought myself the Sony a6400. I record all my videos on the GA five and I am going to talk a bit more about what equipment I use to make my videos because for me I'm not a professional photographer I'm not a professional videographer but you do end up learning a lot just making videos like this and buying new equipment and I'm going to try and talk a bit more about that now for me the a6400 was my biggest purchase this year and I can't say I'm a hundred percent happy with it if I'm honest before that I had my gh5 that I'm using here and I absolutely love that camera. It is my favourite camera I've ever had. It's great for stills, but for video, it is just perfect. It allows me to do everything I want to do. And the fact that MFT lenses are so cheap means you can build up a big set of lenses with used prices from a low as 50, 60, 70 quid, and you can have as many options as you want. However, I did need a second camera for B-roll, so I decided to go for the A6400. And Whilst I like the camera, it hasn't really blown me away and I do regret not buying another GH5 if I'm completely honest. And the reason for that is as follows. I bought it with the 18-105 to which is a really good lens. However, I'm disappointed at the minimum focus on this lens, the focus distance compared to the subject. Compared to the lenses I use on my Panasonic and I've got the 12-60 to f2.8 on here at the moment, um, that lens is brilliant. It, I use it for 95% percent of my work. However, the 18 to 105, the focus distance is nearly twice as much as the lens on this. It's no good for getting up and close when you're doing reviews and stuff like that. And the battery life just isn't that great on this camera as well. And whilst the Sony is a nice camera, I'm not as impressed with the overall autofocus system as I thought I would be because you always get the comments from the Panasonic and the Sony going, the Panasonic autofocus is useless, the Sony is amazing. Whilst it is very, very good, I would still not use autofocus at all for my videos. I just wouldn't do it. The pulsing is still very noticeable and it just doesn't lock as well, in my opinion, as using manual focus. So really, whilst it is a very nice camera, I am a little bit disappointed with it. And hands down, if I was buying another one today, it would be a GH5 again, just because of A, the amount of lenses I've already got for it, but be the capabilities that it's got, and I'm just so used to it. I've got to spend a bit more time with it in 2020 just to try and make sure I do get as good a use out of it as possible. But here and now, my default camera every time always will be the GH5, just because I can set it up, hit record, and I know what I'm going to get out of it. Um, but we will 
try and do a lot more with that in the year. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later on as I do a couple more videos. Um, the next real big thing I'm going to talk about really for photography is microphones. And really, I've spent the last two years messing around with audio. If you listen to my videos from probably two years ago, the audio was terrible. And I'm getting to the stage where I'm fairly happy where it is. And I've gone through so many different microphones from cheap ones, the Tezcam, Testar off Amazon. I bought a Rode Video Mic Pro, which uh, to be honest, I'm not a fan in any at all. It just didn't do what I wanted it to do. And then this one product come along that absolutely blew me away. And again, it's from Rode and it's what I'm recording this video on now. And it is the Rode Wireless Video Mic Go. And it is this little thing here. So sorry if the audio is going to get a bit funny. This kit, and I did a review on this earlier in the year, has completely changed how I do my videos. I'm going to get a lav for it because I usually have it hanging off my shirt. For this video, I'm just going to pop it back up there. However, it has been absolutely outstanding and my favorite photography or videography product I've bought since buying the GH5 itself. If you're considering getting one of these kits, don't think about it, just buy it. I sure you will not be disappointed. I'm going to get the lab for it as well. The only reason I haven't done it yet is it's quite expensive to get the official one for it. And when you buy this kit, it's at a reasonable price. But the lab is, I think it was another 60 or 70 quid when I was looking. It might not be quite that much, but it was more than I thought it was going to be. But I'm going to pick that up now in the new year. But for me, really, the Rode video, uh, I think it's the Rode Wireless Go, the official name of it is. There's a link to my video of it in the description absolutely the best video product of the year for me, hands down, and it really has changed the way I do my videos. Leading on from cameras, the next thing to talk about is gimbals, because that's something else we've discussed a lot on this channel this year, and specifically the Ronin series from DJI, the Ronin S and the SC. Now, it's been quite a big year for them in these models, because we originally had the Ronin S, and then they updated the line with the Ronin SC, which is smaller and lighter, and it came with a lot more features out of the box. Now, this did set many users up in arms, saying, why is the smaller, cheaper version better than the original one that I had? And DJI pretty much solved that for everyone by bringing all of the new features that we had on the Ronin SC onto the Ronin S, including Active Track and Force Mobile. And it has to be said, DJI have really gone out of their way to level up the feature set between these two products. And the Ronin S overall has become a very, very good gimbal. And you can choose the model that best suits your needs, whether it be the SC for up to two kilos, and then the S, which has a larger payload. Now for me, the SC covers pretty much all of my use case and it works perfectly fine with my GH5 and the Sony as well. Now I have to say the SC has been a really nice release and we'll add that to the Pro Kit which I've got here with the Focus Motor, DJI really do have a good package. Now I haven't tried many of the other gimbals that are out there so I can't really comment on what those ones are like. I can't really even say the name of the company, I always struggle with their name but one feature that they do have that DJI don't which which is a wireless video transmission system would be nice to see come to the DJI models and you never know it might be something that we see this year. The way that works is you simply uh, plug in your camera to the gimbal and then it transmits wirelessly to your smartphone the HD video image and whilst DJI don't have that one of the big features that they brought this year was the addition to control your gimbal via a gamepad. Now if you've watched the channel you'd have seen I did a video actually on controlling the S with a a normal RC remote using the S bus input. However, the problem with that is it doesn't work with all features unless you're using Fataba. And to be honest, it's a little bit temperamental. However, this year DJI only a month ago added the ability to control it via the gamepad support via the iOS 13 or via Android. And to be honest, this has changed how you're able to use the gimbal. The fact that you can control it remotely with the sticks as well as zoom or focus via the triggers on the top as well and I did a video on that if you haven't seen it and I'll put a link to that one in the description of this one as well but really when DJI bought that to these models it really added a nice set of features that pretty much rounds these models off if we could see something on the wireless HD side it really would make it perfect overall the guys at DJI especially Paul Pan and his team have done a good job on the Ronin and it's going to be very interesting to see where they end up next year they've really continue to bring developments regularly to these models and it's probably
probably the stablest product out of the DJI lineup in the sense of the one that's had the most continued development that I've seen for quite a long time and that's fantastic for users of them. So it'll be interesting to see where we end up and hopefully we might get some new products in the lineup over the next couple of months. Now for me, next year on the Ronin series, I'm gonna try and show you guys a few more accessories because there's a big ecosystem developing around these. Whilst DJI have released quite a number of them themselves, including the dual handles and things like that, there are a lot of third parties making some really nice kit as well, including Small Rig. Now I've had a few companies contact me and ask me to have a look at their handle and things like that, but if I'm honest, nothing I've seen so far I thought really warranted me putting the time into doing a review because it was a very basic and simple product. However, I am gonna try and get in the dual handles and I'm gonna try and get in a couple of the other things and show you guys them in action on these gimbals and try and show you what else you can do with them as well. Something I do wanna do a bit on is the base unit that is available for the Ronin S. I can't remember the exact name of it, but it's the remote base that allows you to attach it without the battery and connect it onto various vehicles like cars and things like that or jibs and I'm going to try and get one of them in as well and show you that in action too. We'll just have to see how the year goes on and see when I'm able to do it but overall I have to say the Ronin S has been a really nice addition this year and it's actually gone down very well on the channel and it's been one of my most watched videos actually all of the Ronin series of products so I want to thank you guys for doing that as well. And overall for cameras, that's really about it. I'm gonna talk a bit more about my equipment as I said in the new year. I'm really, really fancying a S1. Um, I, I haven't got the money to buy one, but I really, really do fancy going full frame. And if I do, it won't be an A7 III, I think. I'm gonna look at the Panasonic system. Budget is going to dictate that, and it's extremely unlikely that's gonna happen anytime soon, because I've gotta get a new video editing PC. However, I am hoping by the end of the year to try and get in the position where I might be able to pick the S1 up and have a play with it, because I've had a look at it in the shop, and, and again, it's something that really is attracting me and I, this full frame is really what's drawing me towards it. The S1H would be amazing but that's completely out the question but again I will talk a lot more about that in the new year. Finally I want to talk to you guys about the channel itself. Now if you've watched this channel for a long time you've noticed that it's changed quite a lot. In the early days the videos looked well bad then in the middle part of it like earlier in the year it didn't look particularly great I've had problems with audio I've had problems with lighting and I've got to the stage of where I'm at now because I had the ability earlier in the year to completely renovate the workshop and I've been able to set things up that I think look visually better and whilst I'm still going to be able to deliver the content I was doing before it just makes things look a little bit tidier I've always had an idea in my head of how I would like things to look and I am getting closer to that now now, with the renovation, I was able to turn it into a bit of a man cave and I've now got my editing area over that side. I've got my large workbench area behind me and then I've got my top-down view area and all my equipment over there with my 3D printer. I still have my heavy engineering bit, which is down that end, and my original bench is still there that I used to use when I did all my Phantom 3 videos. But for me, it really was just nice to be able to get things looking a little bit tidier, get a table in the middle and just have somewhere to sit down and talk to you guys and just have it so it was visually pleasing as well as the content being okay as well. Now I've managed to put out over 80 videos this year which has surprised me if I'm honest. It's been a very very busy year for me personally but I was able to put quite a bit of time into the channel as well and that has resulted in a number of great things. The first one was we managed to tick over the 10,000 subscribers mark in November and I just want to thank every single person who has subscribed to the channel and made that possible. I am a niche channel and I don't run out there looking for subscribers however I massively appreciate appreciate everyone who does. It's been a long slog to get to 10k and my goal for 2020 is to continue to push that and I'm actually going to be pushing it to say I'd love to hit 20k in 2020. It's a very very big ask but I would love to do it. But I am niche content and I understand that but there are some things I'm going to be doing that might spread the net a little bit wider and we might bring in a few more subs as well. But first of all I do want to thank every single person who has got us to that 10k. Okay. The next big thing for me was also winning this Cube Pilot Award. Now I did a number of videos on the autopilots in the year and the guys over at Profi CNC and Hex found it 
very kind of them to actually award me this for the information I've put out. And for me, it was really lovely to get a bit of re recognition just so I know the information I've provided was good and people do appreciate it. Now, moving forward into 2020, there is going to be a lot more of the same, but I am going to be spreading the net a little bit wider as well. But again, don't worry, we're not going to be giving up on the subjects. I've got the Rover to talk about. I've got DJI RoboMaster, which I'm going to be talking about as well, because I have one here now in a box. I can't show it to you because it's for my kids for Christmas. When I say my kids, I mean me, but for my kids. The Q Pilot build on the 550, a lot more around the FPV systems as well. However, I'm also going to be talking a bit more about camera gear this year. And don't worry, I'm not turning into a camera channel, but I have learned quite a lot about photography and videography over the last 10 years. I do love photography outside of doing the channel and having set this up and been playing with lighting and gear, it is surprising how inf much information you pick up. And I just want to be able to share that with people really. And I'm going to be doing some reviews on some cameras that I've personally used, what I think is good for blogging and what isn't. I'm going to be talking about lighting, audio, microphones, and just some little stuff like that. Again, just to try and share some of the experience that I've had running this channel because it isn't as easy as everyone thinks. You make a lot of mistakes along the way. And for me, it will just be about telling people what I think works for me and whether they should consider going down that road as well. But don't worry, we're still going to be concentrating on the aircraft, the drones and things like that. I'm also going to try and talk a lot more about the commercial operator side. I am a PFCO in the UK and I'm going to talk a lot more as we move into the changes that are going to be happening with the rules in June. We're going to see the new aircraft coming in to support Support that and you're going to see the end of the PFCO, the move towards permission based on what you're going to do and not what regarding needing specifically for commercial operation and as well as the other changes around 2019, 945 and 947 as well and what else the CAA throw at us too and as I've been doing a lot of the stuff with SUAS News we're going to continue to talk about that stuff as well. Now as I've mentioned SUAS News I just want to give a massive thanks to Gary and the gang. I was very very kindly invited on to that earlier this year and I've sort of been stuck since. They haven't been able to get rid of me and I massively appreciate the opportunity to join those guys on that channel once a week and talk to the likes of Bruce and the others because these are guys who've been in the industry a really long time. They all know far more than I do, that's for sure. But it's been amazing to be able to have the opportunity to talk to some fantastic people, including Adam, the CEO of Skydio2, on launch day and that is something I'd have never been able to do if it wasn't for Gary and the gang. So I do want to big, uh, give a big thanks to Gary and all of the crew over at SUS News and everyone who participates in it. And I do appreciate being invited on every week as well. If you haven't seen it, please do check us out on a Tuesday. We'll be doing the Christmas video this week. There might be one or two little surprises as well. I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do myself, but you guys will have to wait and see on that one. Really, that is it for this video. It's been a bit of a rant from me on what's been going on and really, I'm looking forward to what 2020 brings. More of everything from me. Hopefully going to try and get to that 20k subs and try and give you guys as much good information as I possibly can. I would like to wish you all a very Merry Christmas. Thank you to every single person who has subscribed, used the links in my videos, watched an ad on the video and supported the channel in any way you can in 2019. I massively appreciate it. I hope you and your family have a fantastic Christmas, have a wonderful new year and I will see you guys on the other side.